blind and helpless. This panda cub is just a few weeks old and doesn't even have a name. But although he doesn't know it, he's very special. He's the latest symbol of a success story which might save one of the world's endangered species from extinction. So popular. The problem with pandas is there aren't many left. Seriously endangered, there are only around 1,600 giant pandas left in the wild. And it's not their fault. Deforestation means the panda's habitat and the precious bamboo on which they depend has been devastated by man. And as their habitat has become fragmented, the chances of pandas meeting and mating with other pandas aren't very high. China's solution to the problem came in 1983 in the shape of the Conservation and Research Centre at Wulong in Sichuan Province. Set in the heart of the giant panda's natural homeland, the plan was simple. Make more pandas. Wulong wouldn't initially help wild pandas, but it would be a sort of panda insurance policy against the species disappearing altogether. But captive pandas were notoriously difficult to breed, and for many years, the centre failed. Ringong 它因为什么这么难呢？是存在三难问题，大熊猫存在发情难，配种受益难及鱼又成活难。所以说这个大熊猫的繁殖是非常的困难。Times have changed. Breeding pandas is no longer a problem at Wulong. There are around sixty pandas at the center. And dozens more Wulong pandas live in reserves and zoos across China and abroad. The number of Wulong's captive bred pandas has increased from just 10 in 1990 to about 130 today. There's no longer a shortage of pandas here, because behind the scenes of fur, fun and frivolity, something more serious is happening. A year in the life of Wulong's giant pandas and keepers is far from straightforward. Reaching the point where Wulong's fortunes have reversed has been a long and painful process. With relatively little known about the habits of wild pandas, much of what they've learned at Wulong is due simply to watching and waiting. Huh? 
In this unique series, filmed within Wulong's walls, we will witness the delight, disappointment, and even despair that comes with reproducing giant pandas. All year long, throughout the seasons, we will have a rare glimpse of the private life of some of the planet's most precious pandas, and consider what their future holds if one day they're released into the big wild world outside Wulong. It's autumn and the birthing season at Wulong. Hidden away inside the centre's special breeding pens, some of this year's pregnant pandas have already given birth. Pandas are naturally solitary creatures, particularly when pregnant, so they are isolated in separate pens. The bars are partly to make them feel safe and secure, and partly to protect their keepers. Pandas are generally passive, but they will attack if they feel threatened. They may look cute and cuddly, but an adult female panda weighs around 100 kilograms and has powerful bamboo-crushing jaws. The newest mother on the block is eight-year-old Ye Ye, who gave birth just a week ago. Her neighbour, Hua Mei, gave birth a month before, as did some of the others. Pandas, like humans, vary greatly in their maternal instincts. Some aren't very attentive to their cubs, but not this panda, the most revered mother of all and aptly named Princess. She's given birth five years in a row. All the pandas were impregnated at the same time in the spring, using a mixture of natural mating and artificial insemination. But there are still a couple of pandas who haven't given birth. Eight-year-old Mau Mau is expected to do so very soon. The problem is that it's very difficult to know exactly when she'll give birth, as a panda's gestation varies dramatically from three to five months, and occasionally even longer. During the birthing season in August and September, the pandas are monitored around the clock. Because one of the greatest problems with breeding pandas is the cub mortality rate. Yodan Just yards from the breeding pens are some of last year's 18 baby boomers. They're living proof of the breakthrough in panda breeding, 
and the first sign that Wulong might become a victim of its own success. These pandas were separated from their mothers when they were around seven months old, earlier than wild pandas, who usually go it alone when they are about 18 months old. In the wild, year-old adolescents wouldn't be in the company of so many peer pandas, but male cubs in particular will still jostle with their mothers in practice for surviving alone. Critics complain that continual human contact might prove detrimental to any future attempts to releasing these pandas into the wild. The pandas might become too dependent on humans to fend for themselves. But at this stage, the priority is simply to produce more pandas. That's not a problem here. Some of these pandas are twins, which happens in about half of all panda pregnancies. Adolescent twins are now common at Wulong, but in the wild, surviving twins are unheard of. No one knows why, but female pandas never raise twins and actively abandon one cub after birth, usually the weaker cub. Ye Ye's twins were born a week ago, but she only has one tiny pink cub with her. It's barely visible. In the wild, the other cub would have died. But here at Wulong, twin cubs usually survive because of a simple technique called swap rearing. The mother panda cares for one cub while the sibling is nurtured in an incubator. Then, every few days, they're swapped. The first step is to persuade Ye Ye to part with her newborn. Not easy, but a diet of bamboo can be boring, so she has a weak spot. With her paws full, it's easier to snatch the cub, which is so small it hasn't even developed the familiar black and white markings, which won't appear for another week. Then, before Ye Ye realises what's happened, it's a race to the nursery. Meanwhile, Ye Ye's other cub has been in the nursery incubator for a couple of days and is being prepared to be swapped. The cub is sweetly scented with Ye Ye's faeces and urine, so she'll recognise the cub as her own, and hopefully not reject it. And by the time Ye Ye has begun looking for her missing cub, its sibling is brought to her.
Even though it's the younger twin, and noticeably smaller than its brother, Ye Ye accepts it completely. With the cub successfully swapped, caring for Ye Ye's other cub is now in the hands of the nursery staff. This is Ye Ye's first cub. It's a young cub. Today is the seventh day. Tongsanjo 感冒还有时候是拉肚子我们现在那个第一两天的话我们就是两天换一次然后后面就是五天换一次到那个一月一个月以后的话我们就是十天换一次这样子The nursery is a second home for all this year's twins who are incapable of performing any basic bodily functions themselves until they're about six months old 这个就是我们这里最大的一个baby了 它现在已经六十多天了，非常漂亮。你看，它的眼睛已经张开了，而且身上身上的毛也长得非常好，很柔软的一个小家伙。这个时候是最乖的，抱着它它就不怎么动。你看，哈喽，它是还没有回名字，
他的活动的，他他他的行为就是什么，做仰卧起坐，就在地下走，这做仰卧起坐，然后又又起来。他是烦躁嘛？这呃，每个学每个学猫的，但是他烦躁的，呃，说，嗯，就是他呃，表现的行为不一样。他的呃，这个这只学猫的烦躁的表现的行为就是仰卧起坐，然后就是活动。嗯、like her neighbors, this isn't Mao Mao's first pregnancy. So it's hoped that the birth will be straightforward. In the past, things haven't gone so smoothly. Sengguan,我们已经已经那个生个那个两胎了。他但是就是说第第一年的话，他也是就是说也是不太会带，就幼崽的话也是应该是没什么问题。但是因为他就是母性太强，他把这幼崽抱得太紧，幼崽就是说
Mao Mao is pacing around her pen, doing more and more sit-ups and seems very restless. She was inseminated around 180 days ago and near the maximum gestation period. It's time to take a closer look and see what's happening. Mao Mao has been trained to lie in this special cage to restrict her movement and allow easy scanning. Even so, she still needs reassurance to keep her calm and steady. The scan should confirm whether or not Mao Mao is expecting. As a fetus is about 900 times smaller than the mother at this stage, it's not easy to find. It's a single fetus. So far this season, all the other pandas have given birth to twins. Good girl. Good girl. <笑>你要有很专业的就是很很专业的饲养员也才能够通过他的外生殖器才能来看通过肉眼的话就是很难以鉴别的他大概差别很细微的通过超声波来来说来来看的话我们是目前来说还不能够看到你看我们他现在
Mao Mao stops pacing. It looks as if her waters might have broken. But she's alone, and for a few minutes, none of her keepers seem to notice that she stopped pacing. She cries out, and her groaning attracts her keeper's attention. Seeing Mao Mao lapping at fluid, they're unsure whether it came from her or might just be rainwater. They want to check, but pregnant pandas can be very unpredictable. She might feel threatened and become aggressive. So first they want to get her safely indoors. In the wild, female pandas retreat to a den or cave to give birth, and Mao Mao's indoor pen serves the same purpose. Closer inspection confirms Mao Mao's waters have broken. She's clearly very agitated and displaying classic behaviour signs of a panda close to giving birth. As news of Mao Mao's labour winds its way across Wulong, everyone gathers in the monitoring room. Although 10 panda cubs have already been born this season, there's no room for complacency, and after years of struggle, every panda birth is still considered special. Even the boss wants to witness the newest arrival and make sure things go well. But as with human births, no one knows how long Mao Mao will be in labour. They could be in for a very long wait. It's not Mao Mao's first pregnancy. She's given birth twice before. But that doesn't lessen the stress and anxiety for both her and her keeper, Wu Dai Fu. Unlike human births, the cub will be tiny compared to its mother, and 99% of its growth will happen after it's born. The size is always a risk, as it's not unknown for a giant panda to accidentally crush her tiny newborn.
Seven hours after Mau Mau went into labour, her cub begins to emerge. But there's a problem. The first thing to come out is a tiny tail. It's a breech birth. The baby is being born upside down. And if the head is trapped in the birth canal too long, or the umbilical cord is compressed, it could mean disaster. Finally, Mao Mao's cub is officially born. But her keeper, Wu, knows something isn't right. The cub isn't the usual pink. It's limp and pale. And there's another sign that all's not well. The breech birth means Mao Mao's new cub might have been denied oxygen, possibly causing brain damage or worse. It's decided to take the cub away from Mao Mao and check it out. As Mao Mao's keeper, Wu is the only one she trusts. So he must be the one to take the cub away from her before it's too late. Mao Mao's newborn panda cub has started squeaking. It's a positive sign, but no guarantee that everything's okay. So her keeper Wu is taking no chances. He must take the cub away and have it checked thoroughly to see if there are any problems. Repeatedly, he tries desperately to take the cub away, but she's not letting him touch it. As the minutes tick by, everyone is increasingly concerned about the cub's chances if Wu can't take it from Mao Mao. Again he tries. and fails. Aware that Mao Mao has been in labour for a long time, is exhausted and probably hungry, Wu has an idea. It works. <laughs> then it's a dash to the nursery.
By the time it gets to the nursery, the cub seems to be okay. At 193 grams, it's nearly 100 grams heavier than normal cubs and one of the biggest cubs ever born at Wulong. But it's still only one nine hundredth the size of Mao Mao. The cub can't hear yet and won't open her eyes for at least another six weeks. Just as well, as she can't be disturbed by all the attention she's receiving. Once Mao Mao's cub is given the all clear, it must be returned to her quickly or she'll become very agitated. With her tiny cub safely back, Mao Mao makes it clear, for her, the show's over. But for Wulong, it's just another step towards saving the species. And besides, there are still other pandas who haven't given birth yet. <laughs> <laughs> 